MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. In this video, I will give you a definition of what MIDI is, I will go through a bit of its history, and I will explain conceptually how MIDI works, but we won't do any of the actual technological numbers and digital part of this in this video. So if you've heard of MIDI before, you might be thinking of an 80s synthesized pop ballad or maybe the 90s, and you would not be wrong. MIDI is often referred to as these MIDI synthesizers, and in the 80s and 90s, it was just all over the place in, these, in pop music. Actually, it still is today, but uh, in the 80s and 90s, right, it was, it was a new great thing because MIDI was developed in the early 80s when people in this realm of electronic music were starting to realize the need for a standardized communication system a protocol so that makers of these different software and hardware devices could use the same language, if you will, right? The underlying format in their code. So that if you switch devices or switch softwares, these things could reliably work together. MIDI was smashingly successful, as you may have guessed, by the fact that you are watching a video on it right now and it's used all over the digital music world. So some key features of MIDI. MIDI is not audio. Even though we do hear MIDI as music, as sound typically, it does not produce sound inherently. MIDI is an interface, it's a protocol, it's actually numbers. It's a way of taking these musical messages or physical actions that are musical messages and encoding them digitally so that they can be recognized across these different hardware and software devices. So keyboards, as I have one sitting here, are the most well-known MIDI device, but we're not limited to just keyboards. Some other common physical instruments uh, include guitars or violins or uh, very popular now, these pads. Part of the general MIDI standards is this list of 128 instruments. And these are all standardized so that, for example, if you ask for sample 41, right, which says violin, it will sound like a violin and not like, say, sample 97, which says ice rain synth. Now these samples might differ across modules. So for example, you might ask for a violin sound from a, an old keyboard and it might not sound quite as good as the violin sound that you would find in GarageBand, but it still should sound somewhat like a violin. So how does MIDI work? So first we have this physical action typically of a keyboard or a guitar or a pad, right, a, pl a playing of the music. There's some sensors in the device which encode the physical action into digital messages. Those are sent to a MIDI processor where it interprets all of these different messages and then sends to audio, this to audio out our speakers so we can hear the actual music. So to exemplify this, I'm gonna talk about the MIDI keyboard and we will take out three key features that I would like for you to focus on of playing a key on a keyboard. So the first is pitch, which is which key on here are you playing? Is it low? Or is it higher? The second is velocity, which we often, uh, we hear this as loudness. So how velocity or speed, right? How much am I hitting? How fast am I hitting the keys? So if I'm being quite gentle to it and I press down these keys, right? It's not very loud. It takes a long time from the top of the key to get down to the bottom as far as I can press it. But if I'm being a bit more aggressive with it, right, then it's sounding much louder. And it's because we interpret this as velocity, right? the speed of the, the, the time it takes from the top down to the bottom. And the third one I would like you to to think about is duration, which is how long are you holding the key down before letting it up? Is it quick or is it long? And the key point about duration is that there are actually two messages happening here, the on message and the off message. So when I play this, 
we often think of playing a key as just like, oh, we're, we're playing keys, it's one thing, I played one note, that was one thing. But it's not, it's two messages. It's an on and an off, and this becomes really important for the thing that we're gonna do at the end of this video. So just to exemplify this, let's take a look in GarageBand so that you can see uh, an example of a modern MIDI uh, software interface. So let's just record something really quick. Okay, a little Tom Petty for you. So this sounds like an, a, a, a keyboard, a classic electronic keyboard, the Wurlitzer, but it's not audio. And we see all of these digital messages right, in a visual interface right here. So you can see this sort of uh, vertical keyboard. You see that my green lines here are the notes that I actually played on the keyboard. And the duration is denoted here with the length of the green bar. And the velocity is actually in here too, which is here in this mini middle white line. And I can take these and, and it's not audio, right? so I can actually edit these as numbers. So for example, maybe I could copy them and I could paste them and move them around. So maybe I wanna change the key, right? And just play it together. I don't know, this, this sounds really terrible. Um, I could change the instrument also over here. So maybe instead of a Wurlitzer, I want the classic electric piano um, or even something even more drastic. We'll just do this for now. Oh, yes. Sounds pretty much the same to me. How about this? Okay. So there are a number of different changes digitally that now you can make with this MIDI recording that you have. Okay. So what if you want to do this, but you don't have a physical keyboard? Or what if your professor is making you do this without a physical keyboard? Yes, easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the first two steps of this, where we have the physical action and the sensors to encode the physical action, and we're gonna start straight with digital messages. So if you're following along in my channel and you're learning Max, you know that in Max we have many objects that can create integers, digital messages, and then what we can do is we can take those integers and send them to some other objects in Max that handle the MIDI processing so that we can actually create our own messages, our own pitch messages, which key to press, how loud to be, how long to hold the note down with integers created by a random object or some other object that we have in Max. And then that way, we don't need a keyboard. We don't need a human player. Everything exists inside of this laptop, inside of the computer, and so maybe we have an imaginary robot, right? A, a non-tangible physical robot who is playing our composition for us or creating its own composition. I will show you all of this, the MIDI processor objects, make note, note out, et cetera, in another video, and this video is, is all done, so I'll see you over there. <laughs>